po io spero che Richard voglia venire ma... Here? No. Ciao, come stai? Ti ho portato un regalo. Oh, so, do you, you want to sit here or you want to go and... Ovviamente è un prodotto del commercio equo e solidale, appena lo apre capite perché gliel'ho portato in regalo. Difficult to access. Oh, it's a cup for making tea. Yes. This is good for, for making tea from leaves. The only difficulty is that it wouldn't make sense to carry this around with me on trips because it would break and it's heavy. So that's, so it, the real problem is what do I do when I'm traveling, which I am all the time. Anyway, but thank you. So, Ah, c'è uno, uno gnu sopra, insomma. Uh, before I get into the main subject, which is the plans for version 3 of the GPL, I want to mention a very important uh, fundamental issue. There is a term that some people use which causes terrible confusion and should never be used. And that is the term, quote, intellectual property, unquote. Now, I heard someone mention that term. I don't think he was explaining why that term should not be used. Was he? Was that explained? It is devastatingly harmful to use the term, quote, intellectual property, unquote because that term implies the existence of something which does not exist. Copyright law exists. Patent law exists. They have almost nothing in common in terms of the requirements that they put on the public. Trademark law also exists. It has nothing in common with copyright law or patent law about how it about what it requires of the public. So the idea 
that there is some general thing which these are instances of already gets people so confused that they cannot understand these issues. There is no such thing. These are three separate unrelated issues. And any attempt to generalize about them guarantees confusion. Everyone who uses the term, quote, intellectual property, unquote, is either confused himself or trying to confuse you. I came to this conclusion a few years ago, and since then, I have decided I will never use that term. No exceptions. I will talk about why the term is confusing, because that's a useful thing to do. But I will never use that term. I never use it. I hope you will join me in making this firm policy of never using it. And if someone else says something about, quote, intellectual property, unquote, I will not respond directly to what he said be without first explaining the confusion buried in it. Because you see, the, bur the confusion buried in a statement is usually more harmful than whatever might be false that he actually tried to say. The false premises, the false presuppositions are the most important problem. So, if someone makes a, a statement about intellectual property and some part of it is the specific point which I might disagree with, the first thing I'll say is why it's a mistake to talk about intellectual property at all. And then I will try to translate what he said into clearer terms. And then I might say if I agree with it or not. But that's secondary. And explaining to people the, the confusion in the term intellectual property itself is the most important thing to do. There is a tendency, we all have it, to follow other people in their choice of terminology. If somebody says an, an outrageous thing and he uses the term intellectual property, you will feel drawn into responding in the same terms. So learn to resist that temptation. The most important mistake, the most important falsehood in that statement is its use of the term, quote, intellectual property in the first place. And the most important thing about it to respond to, <coughs> if you could only choose one thing, is that one. And you could say, <coughs> and since your whole picture of the situation is totally confused, clearly the specifics of what you said need to be rethought. That's all you need to do to, set, to deal with the specific thing he said. So with this, oh, and by the way, when the term, quote, intellectual property, unquote, is used in the name of a law or a committee, that is an example of the confusion. It's, for instance, almost a certainty that any law named, quote, intellectual property, unquote, is a harmful, an unjust law. Of course, you'd have to check the details to make sure of that, but you can be almost certain just from hearing the name. And the reason is <coughs> that you can tell from the name that unjust premises and confusions went into the design of the law. So what could you expect except harmfulness? So at this point I should go to the intended topic, which is version 3 of the GPL. I designed GPL version 1 in 1989 and GPL version 2 
in 1991. I thought of making a version 3 something like uh, five or six years ago. Uh, we didn't intend to wait 15 years. It was uh, due to the fact that I was busy and that there were some things that were hard to figure out. The idea that there would be changes in the GPL was planned from the beginning. That is, version 1 already included a plan for transition to future versions. We suggested that people release their programs under version 1 or any later version of the GPL. And the idea was that when version 2 came out, it would automatically be usable for all those programs. And in the time since version 2, we've been suggesting that people release their software under version 2 or any later version. And I believe most GPL covered programs do say that, with the result that when GPL version 3 comes out, a lot of software will be usable under GPL version 3. The older versions of the GPL also promise that future versions will be similar in spirit. In other words, the changes will not be radical. Any radical change would be false to the spirit and would be wrong. The changes that we've proposed in GPL version 3 are all in small, small sub-issues. Some of them are very important, but in the overall framework, they're small, they're small changes. And the overall effect of GPL version 3 will be basically the same as that of GPL version 2, protecting the same four freedoms, but doing it somewhat better, dealing with some problems that we have encountered, and adapting better to various different laws around the world. One thing that we've done is we've restructured some of the concepts. For instance, we don't use the term, we, we make it clear that many other activities that have the effect of providing copies to other people are treated the same as distribution. Anything that's covered by copyright law which has the effect that it enables other people to get copies is effectively equivalent to distribution. And this insulates GPL version 3 from certain differences between laws in various countries about just what constitutes distribution. So it has the effect of making the GPL work more the same in all countries, regardless of precisely how they have formulated their copyright laws. <clears throat> so th there are many changes in GPL version 3 which do something like that. They actually just make it more uniform and more reliably doing the same thing we expected it already did. But there are some places where we actually have changed the policies in small ways. One of these concerns software patents. GPL version 2 is based on an implicit grant of a patent license. The idea is if somebody says, here is a thing and you can use it, implicitly he's promising he's not going to sue you for patent infringement if you go ahead and do what he said. However, since in the past eight years or so, some other free software licenses have included explicit statements of patent licenses, patent license grants by the people distributing the software. 
good. I have a cup. Thank you. And so we decided to do the same thing. And we've included an, implicit, an explicit statement that the distributors of the software will promise not to sue anybody who's using any version of that software for patent infringement based on the versions that they distributed. Any, basically, whatever the, their versions do, they're promising not to sue you for. However, there's a subtlety that came up in this. Because what if somebody doesn't have a patent, but he has got a license for that patent, and he distributes the code to you? Well, does that license he got include your exercise of the four freedoms, including the freedom to redistribute copies yourself with changes? Maybe not. But if it doesn't, then it creates a dangerous and unfair situation, unfair to you, because he is redistributing the software or distributing his version of the software, and he's not going to get sued for patent infringement because he got a license. He distributes it to you under the GPL, and the GPL says you are free to redistribute it too. But if you do that, you might get sued because his patent license might not cover you. Well, this is unfair. This is something that's not supposed to happen. He received this program under the GPL, and the GPL says when he distributes a version of it, he must really give you the freedom to do the same. If he can count on safely doing it, and he knows you will get sued if you do it, by a third party, then he's cheating. So GPL version 3, along with the explicit patent license grant, says that if he is knowingly relying on a patent license for distributing his version, he must take some effective step to protect you as well if you should redistribute. Now, the reason it talks about knowingly relying is that there are companies that have signed blanket cross licenses with other companies. So the company distributing the program might have a blanket cross license with some other company. And that blanket cross license might cover a thousand patents. And they don't even know what those thousand patents say. So if they don't know that they have a patent license, they're not required to pay attention. But if they know about a specific patent that would cover this program, that means that they are knowingly relying on their patent license, and now they have to do something to keep you safe as well. This is a very controversial decision. It's, it may seem like a subtle point. It covers a, a, a peculiar scenario, but it's not an impossible scenario. It could be a very important scenario, and in this scenario, this point is essential to make sure the GPL really does what it intends to do, which is make sure you get the freedom to redistribute the software that you got. And this is typical of the ways that we're changing GPL version 3. They apply to complicated scenarios but those scenarios may happen frequently. And in those scenarios, we are trying to make sure that you really get the four fundamental freedoms that define free software. Did someone earlier describe the four freedoms? Then I better do it. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code and change it to do what you wish. Freedom two is the freedom to help your neighbor. That's the freedom to make copies and distribute them to others when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to help your community. That's the freedom to publish or distribute modified versions when you wish. So here we've been talking about 
a change necessary to ensure that freedom too really exists for you in a certain special scenario. Freedom too being the freedom to redistribute copies. And also freedom three, it applies to that too. Another area where we have made changes concerns digital restrictions management. Now, Freedom Zero says you are free to run the program as you wish for any purpose. We are not limiting Freedom Zero. If someone wants to run a program to encrypt something, that's fine. If someone wants to run a program to decrypt something, that's fine. If somebody wants to run a program to produce an encrypted medium that's difficult to access, that's fine. If somebody has some other program, which a GPL covered program to access that media, and he wants to run it to access the encrypted data, that's fine too. And distributing software which you could use for those purposes is also entirely permitted and will be permitted by GPL version 3. However, Freedom Zero does not include imposing your purposes on someone else who's going to run the program because his freedom zero is the freedom to run the program for any purpose of his. So there is no such thing as the freedom to use any software to impose your purpose on someone else. In fact, that should be illegal. I'm serious. And that's what DRM is. When somebody distributes a player that it has DRM in it, what he's doing is trying to restrict your running of your computer for his purposes, which is directly in conflict with the four freedoms that you should have. And that's what GPL version 3 is in certain ways trying to stop. And it does this simply by assuring you of all four of the freedoms when you use the software. You see, because DRM, Digital Restrictions Management, is a plan to restrict the public, anyone distributing a version of a GPL-covered program as a player for DRM media always does something to stop the public from modifying the player. Because his purpose in distributing a DRM player is to restrict you, he has to make sure you can't escape from his restrictions, from his power. And that means he is always going to try to deny you freedom one. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code of the program and change it to do what you want. What you want might be to escape from his restrictions. And if you have freedom one, you can escape from his restrictions. So his goal is somehow or other, for practical purposes, deny you freedom number one. Now, what he might do is use non-free software and then completely deny you freedom, number one. In fact, that's what they usually do. We can't stop that by changing the GPL because they're not including any GPL-covered code. They don't have to pay attention to the GPL. There should just be a law against it. This should be illegal. DRM should be illegal. But we can't change laws by writing the GPL. However, there are those that want to use GPL-covered software for this purpose, and they want to do so by turning freedom number one into a sham, a facade. 
So they plan to do something like make a modified version of the GPL covered program which contains code to restrict you and distribute that to you and somehow arrange that you can't really modify it or if you modify it, it won't run or if you modify it and run it, it won't operate on the same data. They do this in various ways. This is known as TiVoization because this is what the TiVo does. In the, the TiVo comes in, includes some GPL covered software. It includes a GNU plus Linux system, a small one, but it does. And you can get the source code for that as required by the GPL because many parts of GNU plus Linux are under the GPL. But, and once you get the source code, you can modify it. And there are ways to install the modified software in your TiVo. And if you do that, it won't run, period. Because every, it does a check some of the software and it verifies that it's a version from them. And if it's your version, it won't run at all. So this is what we are forbidding with the text we have written for GPL version 3. It says that, when they, that, that the source code they must give you includes whatever signature keys or codes are necessary to make your modified version run. In other words, it ensures that freedom number one is real. That you really can modify the source code, install it, and then it will run. And not only that, we say it's re they must give you enough to make the modified version operate on the same data, the same range of data. Because you see, the plan, Microsoft's plan, which they called Palladium, and then they changed the name. They changed these names frequently so as to evade criticism, to make criticism difficult, to make any kind of comment on their plans difficult. They, you, you talk about their plan and they say, oh, we've, we've dropped that. We have a different plan now. And probably it is different in some details. But the point is, <laughs> that they generate encryption and decryption keys using a checksum of the program, which means that a different program can't possibly access the same data, although that's just the base level. And then on top of that, they implement other facilities where the program simply has to be signed by the authorized signer in order to be able to access the data. Well, GPL version 3 says if they distribute a GPL covered program in this way, they must provide you with the key necessary so you can sign your version and make it access the same data. Otherwise, they would say, yes, you can run your modified version, but it will have a different checksum. So your version would only operate on data files that have been made for your version, just as our version only operates on data that's been made for our version. And what that means is all the available files will only work with their version, and your changed version won't be able to access them. That's exactly, in fact, how treacherous computing is designed to work. The plan is that they will publish files that are encrypted and it will be impossible to access those files with any other program. So <clears throat> GPL version 3 is designed to ensure that you really effectively get the freedom to take the program you were given, modify it, and run the modified version to do a different thing on the same data, on the same machine. But there's one other way that we're trying to thwart DRM. You see, one thing they do is some countries, including, I'm sad to say, this one, have adopted unjust laws that support DRM. 
the exact opposite of what they ought to do, which is prohibit DRM. And what they say is, when media have been encoded for DRM, then writing another program to access that media is illegal. And the way they do this is they say the DRM constitutes an effective, they call it protection, I call it restriction measure. And so what we say is by releasing a program under GPL version 3, you agree that it is not an effective restriction measure. In other words, you authorize others to develop on their own software to read the output of your program. This also is an, a matter of recognizing and respecting their freedom to develop software and use their computers. And this is actually, what I've described so far is all that GPL version 3 says about DRM. Another area in which we have worked on, in which we've made large changes, has to do with compatibility with a wide range of other free software licenses. We've always understood GPL version 2 and version 1 as being compatible with some other free software licenses, namely those that don't require anything except what GPL version, what, except what the GPL requires. So for instance, there is, uh, there's the, X11 license. All it requires is that you keep the license there. This doesn't actually demand anything that conflicts with the GPL. So we've always interpreted it as being compatible with the GPL. And what that, what it means to say that two free software licenses are compatible is that you can take code from a program under license A and code from a program under license B and put them together in one program and you have not violated either license. If both licenses permit the combining of the code, then you can combine the code. And that's what it means to say the licenses are compatible. Now, it's very useful to be able to combine the code. So compatibility of the license is a, is a convenient thing. Now, it's impossible for all free software licenses to be compatible. You see, the GPL makes certain requirements, and we are not willing to have them taken off. And so another license, such as GPL version 1, that doesn't have those requirements, cannot be compatible with GPL version 2 or 3. That's impossible. A license like the Mozilla public license has its own specific requirements, but some of them, it requires things the GPL doesn't require. It can't be compatible, I believe. So we can't be compatible with all of them. But we went through other free software licenses and we identified certain kinds of requirements that are pretty harmless. And we wouldn't mind if people could attach those kinds of requirements to GPL covered programs. And we made an explicit list of those kinds of requirements. Section 7 of the draft of GPL version 3 says you can put your own terms and conditions on code that you add to the GPL covered program. And your terms and conditions can include these kinds of requirements. You can also give additional permission, any kind of additional permission you like. So your terms on your code can be more permissive than the GPL itself. And 
GPL, sorry, Section 7 makes it completely explicit that this is compatible with the GPL. Now these, the, ex, the added kinds of requirements that you can make include different requirements for as regards credit and notices and how to identify changes on your code. That's harmless. That only really is relevant when people change your code. And when they do that, they'll see your terms at the beginning of your code and they'll know what to do. And it can include a requirement that they not use certain of your trademarks in ways that trademark law forbids. And this would just be a way of reinforcing trademark law using the copyright on your code. And that's harmless because you can actually do that with trademark law in the first place. So this doesn't actually restrict people in any way that they wouldn't be restricted otherwise. And <clears throat> Then there is, you can put on requirements that, and this is an, a non-trivial kind of requirement that we've decided to let people put on. Requirements that if people run your code on a publicly accessible server, then it must have a command that the user can use to download the source code of the version that is running. Which means that if someone makes changes and puts the changes in his version on his server, he has to make his source code changes available to the users who talk to his server. This requirement is known as the Afero Clause because it's used in the Afero GPL. The Afero GPL is like GNU GPL version 2, except it has this requirement as well. We were thinking of including some kind of requirement like that in GNU GPL version 3, but we didn't want to make it apply to everything automatically. That would be a drastic change. So we would have to make it something that people could activate explicitly for their programs. And then I realized people could activate it explicitly for their programs by putting the Afero GPL on their programs. And as long as the GPL, the GNU GPL says it's compatible with that, that's a way that you could activate that requirement for your code. And it means we don't have to put any specific thing about that in the, G in the GNU GPL. We only have to make the GNU GPL compatible with it, and we did. There's another kind of requirement that we've decided to permit, and this is patent retaliation clauses. Now, the reason is that there are several other Patent, there are several other free software licenses that have patent retaliation clauses. So what these patent retaliation, patent retaliation means if you sue somebody for patent infringement, then you lose the right to use this code. Of course, there are many ways to do that. Because every patent retaliation clause puts on some specifics. If you sue him or him for patent infringement in certain circumstances, then you lose the right to use this code. And the question is, what are those circumstances? What are the conditions under which the retaliation operates? Now, we saw that there are some very broad and nasty patent retaliation clauses. Some of them say, if you sue me for patent retaliation for any reason, about anything, you lose the right to use this code. Now, that's bad because it means, suppose I sue you for patent infringement and you have a patent so you countersue me, 
and then my free software license retaliates against you and you lose the right to use that code. Now that's not fair because in that case you are defending yourself, not, you're not the aggressor. So we decided to accept only patent retaliation clauses that are limited enough that they do not retaliate against defense, that they only retaliate against aggression. So there are two kinds of clauses that we identified that do this. One is, if the clause itself makes a distinction between self-defense, between defense and aggression. So it says, if you sue somebody for patent infringement and it's aggression, then you lose the right to use this code. But if you are suing in retaliation for aggression, then what you are doing is defensive, and then we do not retaliate against you. This is one kind of patent retaliation clause that we accept. The other kind is, if you sue alleging that some free software related to this code is patent infringement, then you lose the right to use this code. So these, in the broad space of possible kinds of patent, in, of patent retaliation clauses, we picked two kinds, each of which is limited enough that it will not retaliate against people for practicing defense with patents. It will only retaliate against aggressors. And we've said these two kinds of clauses are okay to add to your code in a, GP, in a GNU GPL covered program. This is a conceptually complicated thing. There is no way to make it more simpler. I hope at least I've explained it clearly. The GPL itself does contain one very limited kind of patent retaliation, but it's a different kind. It says, <clears throat> If you sue somebody else for, if you make changes in a GPL covered program and then somebody else makes similar changes and you sue him for patent infringement, then you lose the right to continue making changes and copying the program to, to your own machines. This is a very limited situation, and it's meant to protect against one particular kind of abuse on the part of server operators, where they make an improvement, which they're free to do, and they run it on their servers, and they don't release their source code. And if the code does not have the Afero clause on it, then they don't have to release their source code. And then you decide you're going to implement a similar improvement, and then they sue you for patent infringement. So once again, we're making a change that, that keeps people honest and makes sure that the four standard freedoms that the GPL has always tried to assure really apply in all cases. This is pretty much it, but there's also one interesting change in, uh, I think it's section four now. No, maybe it's section five, I can't remember, I'm sorry. It's the section that uh, deal, sorry, it's a section that deals with modified versions. Uh, we, there has always been a requirement that if you get a program that prints some kind of notice about the license when it starts up, you can't take that out. We have generalized that so that it applies to various kinds of, 
of user interfaces in various ways. So for instance, if the program is graphical and it has an about box, the about box has to say this is free software under the GPL. And uh, if in, you know if it if it uh, if it starts up interactively and asks for commands, then it has to print the notice at the beginning. And the requirements are a little bit different depending on how obtrusive this would be. For instance, the about box is, simp is simply a menu item sitting in a menu. Well, that doesn't bother anybody, so we just say it always has to be there. On the other hand, printing a notice at startup can be annoying. There are certain programs which shouldn't print notices at startup. And so what we say is, if the program you got doesn't print a notice and you change it, your version doesn't have to print a notice either. You know, if you change Bash, well, the shell is not supposed to always print a notice when it starts up, and we don't require you to make it print a notice. But if you gave it uh, a GUI with menus, you'd have to put in an about box, because the about box doesn't do any harm. Uh, I think I've covered, I've covered all the issues I can think of that are worth covering. But I'm willing to ask for questions. However, you, know, you could discuss a question with me, but if you think you see a problem, you should go to the site gplv3.fsf.org and report this problem and get it considered through our discussion committees and they'll either present, publish an answer eventually or they will pass the issue on to me and I'll think about whether a change is needed. So I'm ready for changes. Sorry, ready for questions. Please speak loud. I am somewhat hard of hearing. Oh, okay. Abbiamo un microfono per le domande. Chi vuole? Is there a translator? Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. That's nice. Yeah. I don't know if it's on. Um, I would like to ask, uh, what is the position of Stallman, and to clarify a bit about the different position of uh, the Linux community, about the digital rights management, and about what? their... Oh, well, of course, I can't speak for them, and I don't want to try. <laughs> okay. All I can point out is that Linux is one of thousands of programs in the GNU plus Linux operating system. These programs already have various different licenses. If some of those programs continue to be distributed under GPL version 2, while others move to GPL version 3 or to GPL version 3 or later, that won't be any disaster. The developers of Linux are the ones who, de who will decide which license to use on their program. <clears throat> but I'm confident that most of the GNU plus Linux system will be under GPL version 3, regardless of what the Linux developers decide about their program. 
I hope that they will move to GPL version 3 because I want to see Linux resisting TiVoization. Linux, after all, is one of the programs that has already been TiVoized. Thank you. Io volevo domandare se nella nuova GPL ci saranno delle chiarificazioni nel caso di linguaggi dinamici, nel caso di linguaggi dinamici relativamente al link, che è attualmente è specificato solo per linguaggi statici. Is there a translation into English? I'm hearing nothing. I can hear. Is there another one? Now I'm hearing something. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, bye. Translate. Translate. Se nella nuova licenza ci saranno chiarimenti riguardo al link in caso di linguaggi dinamici come Python o cose del genere. In quanto attualmente è più Changements, changes like what? Li Anton? Link in uh, dynamic languages. Python. Or Java. You know, the, the dynamic language. Oh, uh, well, actually, yes, it, there are changes making it clearer that it doesn't matter which kind of linking is being used. If, the t if, if, the, if there are two modules that are designed to be run linked together, and it's clear from the design of one or the other that they are meant to be linked together, then we say they are treated as one program. And uh, so I hope that will make it a little bit clearer, although that's not really a change, it's a clarification, because that's what we believe GPL version 3 means already. Okay, okay thanks. Thank you, and nice to see you again in Turin. Um, I have, I think, two, two different questions. Uh, well, the first is, uh, what happens if anyone released code under GPL version 2, maybe 10 years ago, and uh, now isn't happy with version 3 and says, uh, I mean, you're changing the spirit. I, I, well, when I said I would release it under version 2 and subsequent versions, I, I didn't think of these. So well, do, you, do you imagine I, that, I mean, he would be bound to version 3? or Yes, I mean, because we're not changing the spirit. These are small changes. Okay, so, so basically you're the one who judges. Wh well, uh, maybe a court uh, might, but I can't believe that anyone not strongly prejudiced would conclude that this is a change in the spirit. Uh, the ch a change in the spirit certainly permits changes in details of the requirements. And uh, <clears throat> anyone who released it under GPL version 2 or later should have seen the changes that were made from GPL version 1, which were not as big, but they were the same kinds of things. So, <clears throat> So yeah, if he released it under GPL 2 or later, you'll be able to use it now under GPL version 3. Okay, so the second question is, uh, uh, well, as you know, I, I'm involved in these uh, United Nations processes on the internal governance, and so I'm interested in, in understanding whether, I mean, you think that the, the fight against uh, uh, digital right management and trusted Digital computing, restrictions management and, and treacherous, treacherous computing. computing. Okay. <laughs> So Don't use the enemy's propaganda terms. Every time you use those terms, you are supporting the enemy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
so the, the correct wording is treacherous computing, right? Yeah. Okay. So all all the fight against these uh, the, uh, these new mechanisms. Uh, do you think it, it can only be won by writing free software, releasing free software? I or, don't know. Or do you? I mean, do you imagine that there should be the need for intervention or lobbying at the legal level? At the oh, I think level? treacherous computing should be illegal. Yeah, I, me too, by the way. But uh, well, I don't know how we're going to convince governments to actually do that, yeah. because governments mostly are not very democratic anymore. They mostly are the proconsuls of the mega corporations. Their job is to keep us in line under the rule of the empire. So. That's why they, they run for office and then they get into office, they do what the emperor, the emperor being the mega corporations, tells them to do, and their job is explaining to us why they can't do what we want them to do. It's very, very sad, and once in a while somebody has enough courage to actually refuse to obey, somebody like Hugo Chavez. So you th do you think it's not even worth trying? Or? Oh, it's worth trying. <clears throat> it's just going to be hard. But uh, y y the point is you have to keep putting the pressure on these politicians. In France, there's a battle going on, and we still might win it, about the legalization of peer-to-peer -peer copying on the Internet. You know, this shows that when enough people get energized, the empire can lose a battle. It's very important. Thank you. Another thing that people should do is refuse to buy anything that's based on DRM. Don't buy corrupt discs, that is, the fake CDs that have music set up such that you are blocked from copying it. Don't buy DVDs unless you have DECSS and you can copy it. If you can't copy it, don't buy it. Um, Duke. Allora, vorrei chiedere un'informazione. Eh, so che eh, la parte giuridica della, della GPL3 eh, verrà curata da, eh, dal professor Moglen. Eh, mi chiedo se ehm, darà, per avere un aspetto più internazionale ci saranno altri giuristi di altri paesi che collaboreranno alla, alla stesura della GPL3. Well, first... I'm the one who decides what goes into GPL version 3. And of course, whenever I think of language, I'm usually working with Eben Moglen since he's a lawyer, and he's the only one who can tell me if the language will really do what I hope it will do. But at the, meanwhile, a lot of other people are involved. For instance, you can go to the gplv3.fsf.org site and study it, and if you think you see a something that's not good or whatever kind of problem you might think there is, you can report it, and then it will go, your comment will go to a discussion committee. There are four discussion committees. It will go to one of, of those committees, which will then group your comment with other comments that raise the same issue, and then they will study the, each issue and post their, the issue and their response to it, and your comment will be connected to the issue which they grouped it into, so it will be connected to the response as well. And thus, there are probably hundreds of people participating in in checking the draft and trying to make sure it does the right thing.
in the end of the process of uh, deciding what modifications of the license will be done, there's one single person that is you. And can you explain what this decision, decision and you have not uh, chosen to make some group of... Uh, I don't know other people who could do this. I hope that the process that's going on now will help develop people who could be part of such an activity. But at the moment, I don't know anyone that I could delegate this to. Obviously, I can't always forever be the person doing this, barring unforeseen advances in medical technology or AI and nanotechnology which I certainly hope will come soon, but they're not likely. <laughs> but <clears throat> at this point, I think this is the right thing to do. Maybe it will change in the future. I hope. I mean, we're going to have to replace me somehow, <laughs> sooner or later. Thank you. Se, se posso aggiungere a, a, questa, a questa domanda, c'è anche da, da tenere un'altra considerazione, è che la GPL è un documento, un documento legale importante, per cui eh, pensare di, di, di poterlo gestire in maniera come, come una legge governativa in questo momento, oggi e ancora non è... Non era, non era possibile, non era pensabile, quindi eh, da parte di Free Software Foundation c'è una promessa che è scritta e messa per iscritto è, ed è ovvero quella di dire che alla fine del processo di, di aggiornamento e di revisione della GPL3 qualsiasi decisione venga presa da Stallman eh, con il supporto legale di, di Moglen sarà pienamente giustificata, quindi qualsiasi issue, eh, qualsiasi problematica che viene segnalata dalle, eh, dal processo di commento pubblico avrà una appropriata giustificazione alla fine del processo, quindi su questo possiamo stare tranquilli che non ci saranno parti opache, che non ci saranno eh, scelte condotte in uh, in, in, segre, in segreto, in segretezza. Il segreto è stato mantenuto sulla, sulla bozza di GPL3 fino al 16 gennaio, da questo momento in poi, quindi dal 16 gennaio è tutto sotto la luce del sole, è tutto, è tutto a disposizione, è tutto pubblico sul sito web, si può seguire ogni commento nella sua evoluzione fino alla, alla dismissione oppure alla, finché diventano, diventano problematiche che vengono poi segnalate e portate avanti alla Moglen e Stalman. Se non, ci sono, se non ci sono altre domande. Ah, hey, scusa. Uh, should this be the last question or should yes. we go on? Okay. This will be the last question. All right. Uh, you told us uh, about what uh, GPL3 will be, but uh, what about uh, uh, the, the issues that uh, are included, the suggestion that you refused? Uh, can you give us uh, sorry, some samples? Sorry, confuse what? I don't understand at all. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Try saying it in Italian, maybe it can be translated. <laughs> Volevo avere un paio di eh, esempi su ciò che la GPL3 non sarà. Cioè sulle, sui suggerimenti oppure sul, eh, sui contenuti che si reputano non appropriati per la GPL3. Well, when, we, when I decided that we had to do something to resist digital restrictions management, the obvious way to do this would be restrictions on what kinds of jobs the program can be made to do. But I decided that would be the wrong way to do it. And so I thought hard and I came up with a way 
to achieve the job by directly protecting the freedom of each user without any re restrictions about what technical job a version of the program can do. And uh, another example of this decision was, of, of, a de of what we decided not to do, was putting the Afero clause into the GNU GPL in some way. Another example of something we decided not to do Yeah, we decided not to put in very much in the way of patent retaliation clause. And the reason is we have doubts about how effective those clauses really can be. Uh, we have doubts about whether our community actually has enough power that, our, that the threat of our retaliation would scare anyone. So, so these are some examples of, of changes we decided not to do. Some for reasons of principle and some for practical reasons. So thank you for your attention and happy hacking. Oh, she's going to have to be hacking. <laughs>
I would not use the GNU GP, the GNU free documentation license or <coughs> any such license for a statement of opinion. I would use <coughs> a verbatim copying only license for a statement of opinion. This is important. I think that the choice of license for this for this document was not the best one. This document is released under the GNU free documentation license, which is a good language good license to use if you're writing a manual or a dictionary or an encyclopedia. But this is not a reference work or a or an educational work. This is a statement of opinion. For statements of opinion, I think it's absurd to permit modified versions. So someone else should be able, should be free to modify this and say, uh, replace uh, karma with asshole. I mean, <laughs> no, if I make a statement of opinion, I permit exact copies only. And that, I would say, is the right license for a statement of opinion. But you can do what you like. Okay. Well, you could release it on the website with a different license. too late to change the license on these copies. They've already been released. But on the website, you can release it with a different license. Correct. Okay.